Hi guys, good morning and welcome to my channel, Memoirs of an Empress, A Silver Lining. We're doing a simple Bible studies course. It has been uh, about two weeks, maybe a little more into it, and we have a couple of more weeks to go. This is be Bible study for beginners, a course that I designed to help you to peer into the Word of God, read the Word of God for yourself, and apply it to your life and be blessed and receive salvation. Today, we're going to be talking about a topic that is very important. It's called, No Part of the World. I'm gonna open up in prayer, a quick prayer so that God could bless this reading. And then I will um, expound on two scriptures today, two small scriptures that are so powerful. So I'm going to get right into it, guys. It is Saturday morning. Um, it's a cloudy day, but as always, God woke us up this morning and we're shining. We're light beamers of the world. Remember that. So let's dive right into prayer and then let's get right into the scriptures. Oh, I'm sorry. If you're here for the first time, welcome. And if you're here and you've been here before, welcome back. Let's go. Dearest Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to praise you and to glorify your name today. Heavenly Father, please be with me as I read these scriptures and help these scriptures to to make someone receive salvation today, to make them peer into the word of God and to learn how good you are, how merciful you are, how loving you are, and that you are a God that wishes for no one to be left behind or destroyed. I thank you so much for everything you are. Please bless us today and keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, guys. Um, please take your Bibles out if you have your Bibles. If you've been following from the very start by now, you should have a Bible. Um, I told you you could even get one in a dollar store um, or Amazon, which is a great place to get one. Let's go to John 17, 16. And that reads, they are not of the world, just as I am no part of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they may also be sanctified in truth. Okay, so here, Jesus is saying that his followers, his believers, his people are no part of the world because he was no part of the world. What does this mean? Well, we can see where this world is going. We can see that. It's a culture of pervertedness, everything bad, everything that is good has been turned around in the world to bad and everyone is glorifying this. Um, ignorance, savageness, um, it's just, it's chaos, it's madness, it's insanity. Um, God created us. He is the grand, the master, master creator. And he gave us 
all of the earth to enjoy. But it did come with instructions. And the instructions could be found right here in the word of God. The word of God tells us exactly how to live, to function at our highest, to be the very best inside and out we can be because he is the creator and he knows. But this world has taken everything and they have abused everything because they have not followed his instructions. And so we as sheep follow the great shepherd. We follow his instructions and therefore we do not follow Satan. We do not glorify Satan and we are considered no part of the world. Is it an easy road? No. Anybody that tells you to walk and follow Christ and that it's easy, they're a liar. It's one of the hardest things you can do, but it is one of the most rewarding things and it is one of the most courageous things and it is definitely life-saving. Now guys, there are some people that have been tricked into following Satan because Satan is very crafty. He uses different things as bait, as lore. The lust of sex, the lust of money, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, all of those things Satan will use as a bait. And so some people have been tricked and by the time they find out they're in it way deep, way deep, and it takes a lot of courage and a lot of strength to let go of Satan's hold. But now, what about God? Let's forget about the mark of the beast and remember the seal of God. Let's go to John 2, 15. And that reads, Wait, is it First John two fifteen? Let's turn to First John because I think I'm in the wrong book. I'm so sorry, guys. This never really happens. Well, let's just read it because maybe I was supposed to read it. So John two fifteen says. we'll start at 13. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons, and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold pigeons, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remember that it is written, zeal for your house will consume you. Okay, so we see here, everyone thinks that God is just love. God is the very vessel of love. But God is a God of war. Yes, God is a God of war as well. So here we see, when he came into Jerusalem and he came into the temple, he saw people doing worldly things. They were selling. They were making money right in the temple. Hmm. Does that remind you of anything? 
bingo, gambling in the churches. Yes. So he came into the temple and he made a whip out of cords. And he beat those people, beat those people right out of his temple. And he said, do not utilize the temple and, and, and do these things in the temple. So we see God is, God is a God of war. You know, a lot of people, and I'm just going to expound on this. A lot of people think that God is frail. You know, they identify him as this white man who is laying fragile, dead on a cross. But when we do the research, we see that Jesus was a carpenter. And carpenters are not frail. They're very strong. They have muscles. And Jesus was brown colored. He was not white. He was brown colored. And, you know, Jesus was so normal looking that people often, they didn't identify him. He had to be pointed out. Although he was a king, people were looking for somebody who was who was white, number one, and who came in luxurious royal clothing. But Jesus didn't come like that. Jesus was very normal looking, very, very average looking. Although he was 100% man and he was 100% God, he was very normal looking. Um... Jesus laid down his life. Nobody took Jesus' life. At any time, Jesus could have called legions of angels to come and destroy the people who had put him to death, who had tortured him. But he did not. He laid down his life, and he hung with the apostles, right? And the apostles, they were ready to get it popping. You know, there was one of the apostles that actually sliced off a man's ear. They were ready to get out their weapons, but Jesus urged them to put the weapons away because it, was, because it was time to use spiritual, spiritual weapons. And God knew that he was a ransom and that this had to take place for us to receive salvation. Um, There is a scripture. I'm going to try to find it and that'll be the end of this vlog. I'm just going to look at 1 John 2.15. Maybe I'm in the wrong John. But that John was very um, timely. And it actually related to this uh, talk. Let me go to 2.15 and just see what that says. Forsaking the right way, they have gone astray. They have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved gain from wrongdoing, but was rebuked for his own transgression. A speechless donkey spoke with human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. Well, this too, it relates. It's telling us basically that um, we should not we should not follow um, false gods, you know, follow Satan, go the wrong way because there, there is life and death put before us. And God wants us to choose life because he came to give us life more abundantly. Um, the scripture I was looking for, I must have written it wrong in my preparation for today's vlog, but it says... Um, it talks about loving the things of the world. And if you love the things of the world, how the truth and God is not in you. So guys, today, we need to seek God, okay? A jet, a Gucci bag, a Birkin bag, all of these things. In God's 
day, they will not save you. You can get on a jet. A person can have a lot of money. He can be rich in the world because he's serving Satan. And Satan has given him all these riches. Where is that person going to go in that jet that God can't snatch that jet out the sky? When God is ready to rage war on the earth, on man who was disobedient, everything on this earth is going to shake. And it's going to actually burn. So we have to prepare ourselves to serve God and choose salvation today. Leave the world mentality alone. Work on your insides. Never mind it so much about the outer garment, about going to uh, these foreign countries to get your breasts done and your buttocks shaped. Because if you're looking for a man that loves you because of that, then you're not seeking love. Because if he loves that, he'll love that on the next woman. He'll love that on the next woman. He'll love that on the next woman. Seek to have someone love you to the core. Because that's the love of God that lasts. I often tell my sons, don't run after these women because you love the way their body is shaped. Okay? Look for a woman who has a great heart. A real woman. And pray about finding one they're very rare today guys and if you find one you need to keep them um value them treasure them love them um this world is very morbid the nastier it is the dirtier it is the more they love it drunkardness is out of control this smoking is out of control the gun violence is out of control. And they have us thinking, some people thinking that we're against the Asians. We're against the whites. No, we're against each other. And it's time for us to wake up. Stop sleeping. Wake up. They didn't come with shotguns this time. They did not come with shotties. They came with a shot. The mark of the beast is in the earth. Wake up. The scriptures say, my people die, be, perish because of lack of knowledge. Wake up, guys. I went to the nail salon the other day and I asked the lady, how are you filing my nails? How are you filing them? What shape is this? And she says, oh, this is the coffin is very popular. I said, get it off of me. Get it off of me. I don't want to walk around with any nail shaped as coffins. Now you might say, oh, it's just a style. No, it's the world's culture. And stop buying into it. We're not Barbies. Oh, you're a Barbie. Barbie is dead. Oh, he killed it. Oh, she murdered it. Oh, you know, um, oh, I'm, I'm Barbie. No, we're alive. We have a voice. We're powerful. And we come from strong, strong, a strong line of very powerful, strong, empowered women. God is a God of order, a God of self-control, a God of sound of mind. Stop it with this foolishness. All on Instagram and Facebook posting foolishness. Study to show yourselves approved. This is the love of God that we live eternally and he came to give us an abundant life. Oh, life is short. No, life is not short. Life is short for unbelievers. For believers, life hasn't even started yet. This is a very serious talk, guys. And I hope that I've helped you to want to study the word of God. Because the word of God is the only thing we have right now. Put it in your hearts. Put it in your minds. Study to show yourselves approved. And wake up.
It's time to level up, guys. It's time to get our breast off of the Instagram and our buttocks and, and just being loose. I wrote a book years ago. It was called, and it is called, uh, Little Miss Big Girl Reinstating Grandma's Values. What happened to the values? The values that our ancestors had. Respect. That a man had to earn the right to see our bodies. That lovemaking was beautiful and not thruples and all of this crap. Don't you know you're kings and queens? You come from a royal priesthood. Put back on your clothing, your royal clothing. I'm going to leave it here, guys. I love you so much, my viewers. Thank you for tuning in. Do come tomorrow. Please like, subscribe, and share. Remember, Jesus made the wine. He loved a good time. He made love making. He made sex feel good. He made uh, everything that's great. But it comes with instruction, guys, and balance so that we can be around a long time to enjoy it. Our taste buds, you can taste something sweet. You can taste something salty. You can taste something nasty. You can taste something sour. Because God is just that good. He invented us. Each of us have our own face. What kind of a God can give everybody a, a different face and a different fingerprint? The God that left the perfect blueprint here for us to follow. That's what kind of a God. I love you guys. See you tomorrow. Be blessed. Happy Saturday. Mm -hmm.